Miraculous Ladybug is absolutely insane. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not new knowledge. The show has always been very campy and crazy and downright bizarre at some points, but this, this finale was insane. And I don't mean insane in a fun and endearing way. No, I quite literally mean insane in a bad way. Buckle up because this is going to be a long video. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's the one and only your girl, the cartoon hotspot. And in today's video, we're going to analyze the last day, part one and part two, the season five finale. If you're interested in my thoughts, then stick around, give this video a thumbs up. And for new viewers, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell button to receive post notifications. Without further ado, let's begin. Okay, there's a lot I want to talk about, so the style of this video might differ from my previous videos. I'm truly only going to list off what happened in the finale in like bullet points. Ready? Here we go, because this is going to be fast. The episode begins with a nightmare sequence whereby Marinette wakes up and is determined to save Adrian from his father. Turns out Gabriel has already launched his big scheme and the entire world, yes world, not just Paris, is under the influence of perfect alliance, meaning everyone is experiencing their worst nightmare. Meanwhile, Adrian is stuck in the white room and when all hope is lost and he has no means of escape, he gives Plague his miraculous and tells him to find Ladybug. Whilst Marinette searches for Adrian at the Aggress Mansion for some odd reason, Reason, even though she knows he's in London. Anyways, she discovers all of Gabriel's secrets. Basically, she finds copies of the grimoire here and there, blah, blah, blah. Natalie confronts Gabriel as one last promise to Emily, and he pretty much overpowers her and states that he knew it was only a matter of time before she betrayed him. He carries her limp body to her room where Ladybug witnesses everything and finds out that Gabriel Agrest is Monarch. Des transformations. <gasps> Je savais que vous me trahiriez, Nathalie. J'y étais préparée. During Natalie's last moments, she urges Ladybug to transform back because the perfect alliance nightmare thing in Majiggy has everyone in Paris mind controlled and in search for Ladybug in order to capture her. Natalie then dies, RIP to her. Plague finds Marinette, and just as Marinette hides, Monarch finds her and she quickly transforms into Bug Noir. No, Tiki, We then have truly one of the best fights I've seen in Miraculous between Bug Noir and Monarch. Also, whilst they're beating each other up, the United Heroes and Lady Dragon turn up in Paris and help out. Luca returns with Suhan, Penny and Jagged and they're all guardians now. <laughs> okay, cool. Lila is under a new disguise and arrives at the mansion whilst Bug Noir and Monarch are still fighting. Long story short, Bug Noir discovers why Gabriel became Hawk Moth to obviously bring back his wife. She manages to remove the Butterfly Miraculous from him, but it falls into the water or sewers. I don't know what it is. Marinette lets her guard down and Gabriel obtains the Miraculous, makes his wish and the current universe is destroyed whilst a new one is created. We end the episode with a pool party at Adrian's house and it's close to the end of the summer holidays. Adrian explains to Marinette of what he thinks went down according to Ladybug, who told him Gabriel helped defeat Monarch and has been commemorated as a hero. More on that later on. Adrian is also in possession of the twin rings containing his amok and states he feels free with Marinette. They do kissy kissy and then cliffhanger with Lila. Like I said, rapid fire, extremely brief summary of the finale. We've all seen it, so I didn't think there was a point of summarizing everything in great detail. Overall thoughts on the finale. Okay, I'm not gonna beat around the bush, guys. I really, really dislike the finale, and I don't think I've ever disliked a finale since season three. It's that bad, guys. But I'm gonna be honest and objective here. When I first watched the finale, I absolutely hated it. I was left dissatisfied, disappointed, and discouraged in regards to what the future holds in store for Miraculous Ladybug. I believed it was not the best way to conclude the first story arc, or at least the finale did not live up to the potential that the arc set up. However, I realized something after thinking about the finale for some time. I haven't rewatched it. I don't want to live through that pain again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's not great, but I'd be lying if I said it doesn't have some hidden gems within it. Let me explain. What if I told you that season five finale isn't the conclusion to the first arc, but rather the beginning of the second arc? Once I started to look at it from that perspective, I felt a tiny bit of hope 
just a tiny bit. I'm not sure if it's intentional and that the writers want us to think that the first story arc is wrapped up, done and over with, but there are a few clues to suggest that certain storylines from this arc will sort of spill over into the next arc. So rather than looking at it as arc one and arc two, i.e. two separate arcs, I'm going to refer seasons one to five as arc 1a and season six to however amount of seasons we're going to get as arc 1b. However, there are still massive problems which I will talk about over the next few chapters of this video. The first thing I want to talk about is Marinette letting her guard down. I'm sorry guys, but nothing will convince me that this makes sense even in the slightest bit. Marinette being a naturally forgiving person is fine because the show highlights that's a huge part of her character. She's forgiving to a fault. The issue is sometimes she's forgiving to the extent whereby it's just not realistic at all and it's obvious it's just for plot convenience, which is exactly what the finale does. You mean to tell me Marinette was willing to trust a man that has been terrorizing Paris for the past five seasons, abused his son relentlessly, tried on multiple occasions to have Adrian and her break up, one of which he went so far as to send him to London. You mean to tell me she was willing to trust the man that is the root and the cause of most of her trauma? And if that wasn't enough, he literally stated during their big fight in this finale that if he made the wish, he would sacrifice Marinette. Like, did we, did we all miss that? Hello? And, and sure, Gabriel was in a vulnerable position when she showed him the video message Emily recorded, but it's just downright idiotic for her to de-transform whilst he has 14 other miraculous on him. Like yes, she unified the ladybug and a black cat miraculous, but he still had 14 other miraculouses. So of course he immobilized her and took advantage of her. Like what else was supposed to happen? Again, I don't really have an issue with Marinette being overly trusting to a fall, but you'd think after everything Gabriel did, after being tricked by Felix on multiple occasions, one of which led to her losing the miraculouses in the first place, after Lila had the whole class turn on Marinette, after Sabrina and Kim were an enabler in Chloe's bullying, you'd think after all Marinette has been through, she most certainly won't let her guard down that easily. And this is a hill I will die on. If the writers wanted Gabriel to somehow seize the ladybug and the black cat miraculous from her, it didn't have to be through Marinette letting her guard down because Marinette is smarter than that. Marinette second guesses everything. We're talking about the girl who has a plan for when something goes wrong and a backup plan for that backup plan. It's insane to try to convince me that she'd suddenly trust Gabriel because because she knows what kind of person he is. She has no reason to trust him. It's also odd because for most of the fight, Marinette was absolutely cooking him. Like Gurley was beating his ass and clearing him by a mile. There was a clear winner in that fight and she won it. <laughs> If Gabriel truly had to win, which I'm okay with, I like it when villains win, it could have been a case where for a brief second, just a brief second, Marinette is distracted, but that brief second cost her a lot. And then, I don't know, he says or does something and she doesn't have enough time to react and then he immobilizes her. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with cheap executions for the mere sake of plot convenience. Do you guys remember in the episode Destruction, which was like a while back because it's season five, episode three, Ladybug and Cat Noir had Monarch right where they needed him. And instead of just grabbing as many Miraculouses as possible, Ladybug just started explaining and monologuing her entire plan and wasting time, valuable time, they clearly did not have. I feel like the writers constantly have these characters in a high stakes situations and back themselves into a corner. And when it's time to de-escalate the stakes, they don't really know what to do. So they just have these characters make stupid decisions. It's really frustrating. Moving on. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the debate that has sparked since the finale has aired, and it's gotten pretty heated from what I've seen. Is it Emily or is it Amelie? Now, initially, I thought it was Emily, initially, but I don't anymore. I strongly believe it's Amelie. To back up my opinion, I'm going to use a tweet from Thomas Astrook. And yes, I know he's not always helpful when replying to fans' questions. He's very much the opposite of helpful. But take a look at this. Clue number one. When asked whether it was Emily, Thomas responded, is it? Now, it could very well be the case that he's just trying to play with us and mess with our minds, but clue number two is very important. When someone pointed out that it might actually be Amelie because Amelie wears black as opposed to Emily who wears white, Thomas specifically said that the colours do not matter. In other words, I think he wants us to pay attention to the bigger picture rather than the small details. Small details are great to look at, but the bigger picture is most important here. And what is the bigger picture? Now, heads up because the next few minutes of this video chapter I will be talking about the topic of suicide so viewer discretion is advised. If you happen to find this topic triggering I suggest you skip this part I will put a timestamp of this video that you can skip to. 
Miraculous Ladybug has many themes. One of its themes, and it's directly tied to the character of Gabriel Agreste, and by extension, Adrian Agreste, is the theme of moving on slash letting go. Regardless of how you feel about Gabriel Agreste and how well or poorly written he is as an antagonist, one thing that I think most of us can agree on is that his most consistent character trait, and the reason he's the primary antagonist of Arc 1A, is his inability to accept Emily's death and move on. In the video messages Emily left for him and Natalie, it's clear that she made peace with her impending demise and she specifically begged Natalie to make sure Gabriel doesn't try to bring her back. In fact, it was her very last wish because she knew Gabriel would absolutely go insane at the expense of Adrian's happiness. And it's that very same wish that Gabriel had not been respecting over the past five seasons because if he did respect his wife's wishes, he'd have never become Hawkmoth in pursuit of the miraculouses that grant the power to reshape reality. Gabriel's wish did not align with Emily's wish and I find that very smart. So when Bug Noir plays a video of Emily to him, that's when the realization hits Gabriel that he has been going against everything his wife wished for. But pay attention to what he says over here. Je ne peux pas vivre sans elle. Elle est l'amour de ma vie. Quand elle est partie, tout s'est éteint autour de moi. He says he can't live without Emily, and this was a major clue for what he was about to do next. So when he obtained the Ladybug and Black Hat Miraculous and made his wish, Gabriel chose suicide. He would rather be reunited with Emily in death than live without her and be a father to Adrian. But also to circle back to my point about the theme of moving on in Miraculous Ladybug, I don't think it would be the right message if Emily returned. Gabriel failed to move on from her death, but everyone around him made peace with her being gone. Adrian made peace and learned to look at the bright side of life, forever treasuring and honoring the memories of his mother. Natalie made peace with Emily's death as well. Though it took her a while, she realized her blind loyalty to Gabriel is causing more harm than good and so her way of righting her wrongs was to step up and be the parental figure Adrian needs as per Emily's wish. If Emily came back all of that character development would be for nothing. One of Miraculous Ladybug's main message is that some things in life are completely out of your control and that you just have to accept it, let go and move on which is what Adrian and Natalie do. So what would be the point of having this message if Emily was going to come back regardless? And I know what some of you guys are about to comment because I can smell the comments from a mile away. You're about to say, but in the script and the storyboard, it specifically says slash show is Emily, so the script is right. Uh, no? Sorry to burst your bubble, but you do realize we aren't actually supposed to read the scripts and see the storyboard, like those were leaks. And besides, the script was written two years ago. It couldn't have been the final version. Scripts undergo multiple revisions in like a month. So imagine how many revisions it would have underwent in two years. True, the writers may have wanted to bring back Emily, but for whatever reason, decided against it, which I think was a good call on their part. So yeah, I don't think it's Emily. I think it's Amelie and I rest my case. Okay, you guys have probably been waiting for this section of the video. The next thing I want to talk about is Adrian completely missing from the finale. And to be honest, this for me is what ultimately ruined the finale. Like it's practically unforgivable. No shade to Jess, Aeon and Faye, but who cares? Like, why should I care about them being there? I didn't see a point of them being there in the first place. Literally everyone and their mama was fighting for their life whilst Adrian sits out. Hey, do you remember how the show is called Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir and Marinette is Ladybug and Cat Noir is Adrian and it's, you know, you and me against the world, my lady. But then it wasn't them against the world, was it? It was Ladybug against Monarch. So it's not really Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, it's more of Tales of Ladybug and Ladybug, just Tales of Ladybug. But it, how, how does that work? How, how did we stray so far from the original plot? And it isn't Gable Agrest Adrian, who is Cat Noir's father? So then how does that work? How is it Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir? She clearly doesn't need him because he wasn't even in the city, let alone the country. He was in my city, he was in London with me. <laughs> I'm so sick of it. Throughout the series, Adrian has been constantly sidelined. The show keeps trying to convince us that he's equally as important as Marinette, but then does the opposite of that by actually portraying him as a sidekick rather than her partner. What happened to Yin and Yang? What happened to It's You and Me from the season four finale? I mean, I would have thought after everything that happened during season four, the narrative that was depicted is that Ladybug needs Cat Noir just as much as he needs her, because without one or the other, they're imbalanced and something is bound to go wrong. And 
then what they decide to throw all of that out of the window by introducing the most pointless plot line that adds absolutely nothing to adrian's character other than just to traumatize him for the sake of shock value because yes here's a hot take adrian moving to london is truly the most anticlimactic lackluster pointless and cheap storyline it's supposed to serve as a major story beat but to be honest it was just a cheap way to get him out of the finale why well i'm going to tell you why what if I told you that Adrian being unaware of everything his father did isn't the worst part of this all? And instead, what if I told you that the way in which this happened is actually the problem? You mean to tell me that the only way this could have happened is completely removing him from the action? Because I wholeheartedly and humbly believe that there are better ways of going about this. I would have been fine with Adrian being present present in the battle and then getting knocked out or something and then having ladybug face gabriel alone that's completely fine having adrian give up his miraculous because the nightmare was too distressing for him kind of paints into the narrative that he's lesser than marinette everyone was affected by perfect alliance and had to deal with their nightmares but marinette faced gabriel despite that i truly think adrian wouldn't give up that easily especially when it comes to saving the day again it just reinforces the idea that he's less capable than ladybug and that she's completely fine on her own. A big problem with Miraculous is that it establishes certain rules but then breaks its own rules and the worst part is it's solely just for plot convenience. The series established that Ladybug and Kanoa are equally as powerful as one another. Creation and destruction are complementary forces. One cannot exist without the other and yet there is a clear power imbalance here whereby we have ladybug miles ahead of cat noir now here's another hot take that not a lot of you will like to hear and it honestly saddens me to even say this because i've been in denial for so long to the point i just can't keep gaslighting myself anymore ready okay here we go adrian agrest is not the deuteragonist of the series the show wants you to think he is and miserably fails at convincing you because instead, Miraculous Ladybug may have accidentally, well, sort of most definitely portrayed him as an extension of Marinette's character. In other words, he's solely a love interest, and that's honestly heartbreaking. Let me explain. What the finale, and to be honest, season 3 onwards, did was reduce Adrian's role in the story as a love interest rather than a deuteragonist, which means secondary protagonist, like he was intended to be. His character was reduced to being a damsel in distress, and it's honestly insulting. If you notice since the start of season 5, Adrian's role as Cat Noir lessened more and more, and most of the time he was on screen, it was centered around his love for Marinette. So what we essentially got was Marinette being the knight in shining armor, and Adrian being the helpless princess in need of saving, which is the most tired trope, but reversed in the worst way possible. And don't get me wrong, I like the idea of Marinette being the knight and Adrian being the princess. It's metaphorical for Marinette helping Adrian stand up for himself. Marinette being the push Adrian needs is completely fine and I love that. But she didn't push him. She ended up doing what he needed to do. Now I'm going to circle back to this point that I'm making, but to understand it, I'm gonna have to talk about something else. So the next section of this video is going to bounce off from this section. But I promise I'm going somewhere with this, so don't worry. Let's talk about what we can expect in the upcoming seasons of Miraculous Ladybug. As I mentioned before, it's better to look at seasons 1 to 5 as arc 1a and then season 6 onwards as arc 1b, rather than arc 1 and arc 2, because it's obvious that some things from 1a will spill over into 1b. So I'm going to refer arc 1b as the Lila arc. Arc 1A, which I'm going to call the Aggressed Family Arc, ended with Gabriel ordering Marinette to keep such a huge secret from Adrian. And in turn, when he made the wish, Adrian pretty much forgot the abuse he was subjected to by his father and actually glorified his abuser by remembering him as a hero, which is kind of a slap in the face to abuse victims who see themselves in Adrian. So we have Marinette carrying such a huge weight on her shoulder again and is pretty much lying to her boyfriend. Arc 1A also ended with Lila of obtaining the Butterfly Miraculous, enrolling in Francois Dupont High School under a new identity, and then I'm assuming we're also going to get a glimpse of the full consequences of the wish being made. You see, we saw the positive glamorous effects of the universe being rewritten. The show wants you to think nothing terrible has happened, but there is always a terrible price to pay, which we will see in Arc 1B. 
I'm assuming that in arc 1b, somewhere along the line, Adrian may find out everything his father did to him, possibly from Lila. The pressure will become so overbearing for Marinette that she eventually breaks down and admits to everything that happened in the previous universe. And then boom, Adrian an argument whereby he doesn't trust her, he's going through some sort of existential crisis upon discovering that the one person whom he never thought could betray his trust actually did end up doing so. And Lila capitalizes on everything and makes Marinette's life even more of a living hell. But as much as the Lila arc sounds dramatic and interesting and exciting, there's still a major issue. There's only so much that can be fixed. Yes, Adrian may find out everything, but what is the point of that if he never confronted his abuser? And there's absolutely no way Gabriel can somehow magically come back because he's dead. The most logical and satisfying way that the aggressed family arc should have ended was Adrian confronting his abuser, but instead we are probably going to have him confront Marinette for lying to him, which just re-emphasizes my point that he's not a deuteragonist. He is solely a love interest and therefore by an extension of Marinette's character. Everything leads back to Marinette. Every single plotline is somehow carried by Marinette. And I don't think a lot of people understand how detrimental the effects of this are. It weakens everyone else's character and it also weakens Marinette as well because she simply does not have all of the emotional connections needed to carry these storylines. For example, imagine having Marinette confront Tomo instead of Kagami. It's less emotionally satisfying because what's the point? As a result, we start caring less about Marinette and less about the other characters because we simply just aren't invested in her arc anymore, seeing as she's entangled in other people's arcs. Yes, Marinette is the protagonist and I would not trade that for anything. Marinette being the protagonist whilst Adrian the deuteragonist was the right move to make. Adrian is directly tied to the antagonist of the series, therefore he carries the emotional stakes. We see how Adrian's relations affect Marinette as a hero. It's Adrian's backstory through her point of view, and that is extremely smart, which for the most part worked well. Until everything started to lead back to Marinette. To emphasize my point, I'm going to talk about a show which I'm sure most of us all know and love, Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, this isn't to dunk on one show and praise the other, it's just an objective comparison. For the uninitiated, Avatar The Last Airbender is a story about a young boy named Aang, who is the next avatar in which his role is to restore balance to the world. In this world, there are four nations and each nation has a style of bending. We have the Fire Nation, the Water Tribes, Earth Kingdom and the Air Nomads. Some people are gifted with the ability to bend elements, but only the Avatar is able to bend all four elements at the same time. When the Fire Nation began attacking other nations, Aang suddenly disappeared for a hundred years after being burdened by the responsibility of being the Avatar at such a young age. Over the course of the Hundred Year War, the Fire Nation grew in power, and it's not until Katara and Sokka, siblings from the Southern Water Tribe, found Aang and travelled around the world to help him learn each style of bending in order to face the Fire Lord and restore balance. Where I'm going with this is that not one character overshadows the others. Aang is the protagonist and he has his own arc and storyline. Katara also has her own arc and storyline, whereby she confronts the man who killed her mother when she was a little kid. Zuko, who was the antagonist for the first two seasons and then later became redeemed, also has his own arc and confronts his father who abused him and banished him from the Fire Nation. All of their arcs are connected, but each of them have their time to shine without Aang stealing the spotlight. Aang is the protagonist and he faces the Fire Lord at the end of the series, but it's everyone else's story as much as it's his. So yes, Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir is Marinette's story. She is the protagonist, but it's also Adrian's story. Every character is the protagonist in their own arc, just like almost every character is the antagonist of someone else's arc. Gabriel is the main character of his story, his arc, whilst Marinette and Adrian, or Ladybug and Cat Noir, are clearly his antagonists, seeing as they're always stopping him from achieving his goal. Felix is the main character of his story, Natalie is the main character of hers, Lila, Alia, Nino, Zoe of theirs. It's just that we see more of Marinette's point of view, rightfully so, because she is the most fun and interesting to watch. She is the heart and the voice of the show, she's quite literally the life of the show. Everyone else as the protagonist would not work given the style and format of the show, so Marinette is the perfect choice. But being the protagonist does not mean every single storyline needs to be carried by her. She can be involved one way or another. And if you don't believe me, let me give you a list of storylines and or characters that ended up being overshadowed by Marinette. Number one, most obviously, Marinette's finding out Gabriel is Monarch. I've literally spent half of this video talking about this. Number two, 
Number two is also linked to number one, but in general, Gabriel's character ended up becoming centered around Marinette. Since the beginning of the show, he had a particular hatred for Ladybug and not Cat Noir, even though he's equally a thorn in his side. And then by season four and five, Gabriel's complex relationship with Adrian was overshadowed by his hatred for Ladybug and then Marinette. So instead of seeing more of Adrian and his father, we ended up having a shipping drama and the Adrian and Gabriel conflict became the Marinette and Gabriel conflict whereby she confronts Gabriel on Adrian's behalf. Number three, Marinette finding out Adrian is a senti being because Felix told her. Once again, Adrian is left completely and utterly clueless about everything that concerns him. Number four, the entirety of Cap Blanc. No, like seriously. Number five, Fu's role being shifted onto Marinette. I don't mind this one all that much, but the problem is Master Fu never really established a relationship with Adrian, so all of the responsibility is in Marinette's hands. Number six, Su Han, as in his entire character. Do I even need to explain this? Number seven, Alia Cesare, and this one kind of pains me. Alia had such a great role in season four, and then she went back to just existing for the sole purpose of shipping Marinette with Adrian. Literally 70% of Alia's character is just her giving romantic advice to Marinette. Number 8. Luca Kufan. His entire character revolves around Marinette. Even after he found out their identities, he solely became an Adrianette shipper and then ended up being temporarily written off the season for like 12 episodes. Number 9. Kagami Suruki. Okay, this one is personal. It will always be always annoy me how Adrigami's conflict became Marinette's conflict instead. The episode protection should have been Adrian and Kagami having some sort of closure, but instead we got Kagami lashing out at Marinette even though she knows she's Ladybug. It doesn't make sense how Kagami was easily manipulated by Lila. Lila telling Kagami that Marinette is this horrible person who's awful and manipulative and whatever, Kagami should have easily sniffed out that Lila is lying because again, at this point, she knows Marinette is Ladybug. Ladybug constantly saves the day, so there's absolutely no reason and no way Marinette could be that horrible as Lila claimed. The conflict of this episode should have been centered on Adrigami, not Marigami. Marigami already had their closure in Heart Hunter and Mr. Pigeon 72, so why are we recycling storylines and as a consequence, regressing characters? Like yes, Kagami lacks social cues, but she's not obtuse, she's not an idiot. And Hello, even Luke and Nett had their own closure in the episode Crocodile, but did we see Adrian there? Was he thrown into the mix? No, it was just Luke and Nett. Adrigami deserved the same. Listen, I could list off so much more examples, but this video is long enough as it is. What I will say is the only exception to this is Chloe and Natalie, surprisingly. Like, they're the only ones who have their own subplot that doesn't lead back to Marinette or isn't carried by Marinette of some sort. My point is, having Marinette continuously take over other characters' big moments does more harm than good. Gabriel is not Marinette's villain. Let's just get that out of the way. Yes, Marinette does have some connection to Gabriel, but she did not need to face him. Marinette has her own antagonists, Chloe and Lila. Adrian's antagonist is Gabriel, like, just let him have this one. Marinette taking Gabriel down on her own is kind of like if Adrian took Lila down in the episode confrontation. It would have been cool and cute because he obviously would want to protect his girlfriend, but it's more satisfying seeing Marinette take her down because we are more emotionally invested in the rivalry between Lila and Marinette. It's not Adrian and Lila's rivalry, it's Lila versus Marinette. Cat Blanc gave us a tease of what could possibly go down between an Adrian and Gabriel confrontation. And we all know how that ended up. It didn't end well. The finale was a chance for Adrian to prove himself, for him to be the hero to all, but most importantly, be a hero to himself. We could have had an epic battle between him and Gabriel or have the duo take on Gabriel, but with Marinette taking the backseat and supporting him however way she could. But instead, everything was shoved onto Marinette. And it, ugh, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting frustrated all over again. Whilst we did get an epic fight scene between Bug Noir and Monarch, it wasn't emotional at all, so I just couldn't invest in it. Epic fight scenes are cool to watch, but we could have gotten both an emotional confrontation and a great fight scene had Adrian been involved in the finale. It's two in one, it's a great deal. Why would you not take that deal? Adrian would deliver that. 
why because adrian is a skilled fighter and it's been established that he's a black belt in karate or something and he's a fencer so it would have been a tough fight between father and son but hello there are a lot of emotional stakes on the line as well because he's his son why have this great establishment this great setup for conflict whereby one of the protagonists is directly related to the antagonist if you're not going to explore that you may as well have had hawk moth be a random dude that no one cares about it wouldn't change anything going back to my example of avatar the last airbender it's kind of like if katara confronted the fire lord fire lord ozai isn't katara's villain likewise imagine if ang confronted katara's mother's killer we just won't be satisfied enough because there's less of an emotional impact. Let each character have their moment. It's not difficult. I've pretty much complained a lot throughout this entire video and you're probably wondering, okay, Grace, how about you put your money where your mouth is? How would you write the season five finale? Which, fair enough, fair enough. You wanna know how? Here's how I would have written the season five finale. If the London plot was absolutely necessary, which I don't think it is, but let's say it is, I'd have Adrian still be locked in solitary confinement. Plague tells him that he can just transform and bust his way out, but Adrian is worried because of the security cameras. So he's on the verge of giving up as he's still experiencing the nightmare flashes and is very much distraught over possibly destroying the entire world. Plague then gives him a pep talk that he's Cat Noir for a reason. No other person is more capable and responsible of handling the power of destruction. By the way, I have a video on why Adrian is a black cat holder, so you might want to check that out if you haven't. Adrian then snaps out of his rut, and now that he has a clear mind, he comes up with a plan and instructs Plague to check if Gabriel is gone. By now, Gabriel has gone, and that's when Adrian breaks out of the white room. Marinette could still be at the Agrest mansion, but for a different reason, because honestly, I think her looking for Adrian when she knows he's in London is just very silly. Instead, she should look for Gabriel to confront him. Also, didn't Marinette promise Felix that she'd confront Gabriel? Like, did we just forget that? And honestly, I truly thought Felix would have some sort of role in the finale as well, because in the last episode, he asked Marinette to help him. And then he just was not seen at all. Like he was not present in the battle or even with the resistance. He was just not there until the end of the episode. But anyways, whatever, back on topic. Ladybug discovers that Gable is Monarch and he discovers that she's Marinette, but just before Cat Noir arrives. Then we have the fight between the duo and Monarch. It's a really intense battle and we see both sides getting weaker from fighting so much. Monarch realizes that he has nothing more to lose because he's already out of time and he reveals why he needs the miraculous. And here we have Adrian find out that his mom is dead and that his father has been the big bad villain all along. Father-son reveal and even an identity reveal between Ladybug and Cat Noir. Might as well just toss that in. They agree that they'll talk once the battle is over but right now defeating Gabriel is their priority. Ladybug acknowledges that this must be overwhelming for Adrian so she takes the back seat and supports him in whatever way he needs her. We only have a father-son showdown. There's a lot of action and a lot of talking. Adrian is conflicted but refusing to give up until Gabriel has him right where he wants him. Throughout this confrontation, I'd really like to highlight Gabriel going through an internal struggle of deciding to just go big and go home and be absolutely insane or go easy on his son. They'd have a conversation and there'd be nuances that Gabriel resents Adrian because nobody can convince me that he doesn't. Like think about it, the only reason why Emily is dead is because they wanted to have a child so they went through extreme means of getting that child using the peacock miraculous of course he doesn't fully blame adrian but there's certainly some resentment like how cult fathom resented felix and also adrian is the spitting image of emily like he looks exactly like emily and there is this one episode in season one i believe it's simon says where cat noir snaps at gabriel and he's like you're so stubborn you remind me of someone little lines like that have a lot of nuances that tell me gabriel resents adrian even if he doesn't realize it and doesn't want to admit it anyways gabriel finally makes his decision and pretends to be in a vulnerable position because he knows he can manipulate adrian and then i'd have adrian let his guard down and choosing to trust him. It makes more sense for Adrian to do so rather than Marinette because we've seen time and time again that Adrian gives his father and other people the benefit of the doubt even when they're undeserving of his compassion. That way we don't have to have Marinette make a stupid decision and we actually sympathize with Adrian for once again letting his guard down and trusting Gabriel to make the right choice. So to manipulate Adrian, Gabriel decides that the only way to sort of weaken Cat Noir is by attacking Ladybug who he knows is Marinette. 
Because remember in the episode Elation, Gabriel said something along the lines of Cat Noir's feelings for Marinette is his weakness that he intends to exploit. But then that possible storyline was never explored anyways. Well, here's the opportunity for that. So he attacks Ladybug when Adrian lets his guard down because he knows Cat Noir would take a hit for her any day, any time, without thinking twice, which he does. Because again, he's been fighting these kids for like a whole year, five seasons. He knows enough about his opponents and he can anticipate their very next move. And when Adrian takes the hit for Marinette, he goes unconscious and he apologizes to Ladybug for letting his guard down, especially when it risks her safety. Because I really wanted to play on the narrative that, you know, when you trust the wrong people it doesn't just affect you it affects other people as well the decisions you make affect other people a great example of this would be adrian and chloe's friendship adrian being friends with chloe hurt marinette although she didn't outright state it it did hurt her so him defending chloe him giving her the benefit of the doubt it really hurt marinette and when he realized how much harm that chloe had caused marinette and realized how much even more harm being friends with chloe impacted marinette he cut her up straight away Way. So the same thing can be done with Gabriel, whereby Adrian realizes him choosing to let his guard down affects Marinette and it nearly put her in danger. He then passes out and Ladybug is angry at the thought of Gabriel hurting his son. So she's going at him with full rage, but she can't really outbest him because she's that angry and she doesn't have a clear head. She attempts to attack him, but then he immobilizes her and obtains both of their miraculous. Having acquired the Ladybug and the Black Cat Miraculous, he orders Tiki and Plag to reveal themselves and whilst he's making the wish, Adrian wakes up a few seconds later. Thankfully, he's not severely hurt, although there's an emotional wound as he notices that Marinette has been immobilized and he witnesses Gabriel make his wish. Gabriel then apologizes to Adrian for choosing to leave him rather than making peace with Emily's death and be the father that Adrian needs. But instead of it seemingly being an easy choice for Gabriel, because the canon episode kind of makes it seem like he was fine with just dying, I'd actually have Gabriel shed tears a bit because regardless of what he chose to do, it's a lose-lose situation for him either way. Dying is obviously a terrible outcome, but to him, living without Emily is even worse. He cries because he was not able to be strong enough for both himself and for Adrian. And I'd have him say, she'll take good care of you but I won't reveal like who the she is. And he also say, you'll be okay without me. You always have been. And then Adrian would protest and say he can't lose another parent because losing one was hard enough. And then Gabriel would respond by saying exactly that. You proved capable of moving on with your life something I couldn't bring myself to do. You've already done it once, so what more is one more time? But it wouldn't be said in an arrogant or condescending tone. Gabriel would say it from a place of admiration. He knows Adrian would be fine. He has supportive friends. He has Marinette. If anything, Gabriel was holding Adrian back. So yeah, it's kind of like a bittersweet moment. He makes the wish as Adrian cries and Marinette comforts him. And the two of them wake up in the new universe feeling even more defeated than ever. They still haven't had the chance to talk about the identity reveal because they obviously have a lot on their plate and Adrian is processing his grief and I'll somehow hint that in the next season he'll go down a dark route because he's reached his breaking point and simply just doesn't know how to deal with his overwhelming feelings of hurt, anger, grief and the longing of a parent. Maybe I'll put in an Adrianette kiss, maybe not but I definitely have Adrian say that he loves Marinette in and out of the mask and Marinette replies that she loves him back and will be there for him every step of the way. And to set up the conflict for the next arc, when Marinette says that she loves him and will be there for him every step of the way, Adrian says that's the problem, but she doesn't hear him say it. He says it to himself. I want to play on the fact that Adrian feels guilty. Also, at this point, the whole of Paris knows that Gabriel was monarch. Adrian doesn't want to burden Marinette with his problems because he feels like she's already helped him enough. He's guilty because his father is the cause of her trauma and struggles. He saw firsthand how much being Ladybug was stressful for Marinette. Plus, she has her own healing to do. She doesn't need to be bothered with Adrian's complicated feelings. In other words, Adrian is being selfless and wants to take on this burden alone. So he may slightly push her away, but again, I'm slightly getting ahead of myself, but that would be the conflict for the next season. And obviously we end the episode with a cliffhanger whereby Lila finds the Butterfly Miraculous. That's how I'd end season five. No Emily, but instead Natalie is Adrian's primary guardian. Hence why Gabriel said she'll take care of you. She equals Natalie. Because he chose to die and bring back Natalie, not Emily. 
Of course, there's no huge secret between Adrian and Adrianette, so the Lila arc would have a completely different premise, and season 6 would really delve into just how much Adrian is struggling to navigate through his grief. Because yes, he confronted his father, but there's still so much more he wants to say to him. He wants to forgive him, but just can't bring himself to. And in turn, he feels guilty for feeling so much resentment towards a dead man, because no matter how much he resents his dad, it won't bring him back nor change anything. That's the conflict. But yeah, those are just my rough ideas. I'm not saying it's anything amazing, but it's just simple. The entire series has a lot of hit and miss storylines, and it's far from perfect. But I think a lot of people can excuse that if the finale lived up to the expectations it set. I humbly think that the end of a series or an arc is truly more important than the beginning of it. Because let's say Miraculous started off terribly. That's somewhat fine because there's room for improvement and a chance to redeem itself. I've watched so many series where season 1 was just garbage, but by season 2 and season 3, the writers have identified its flaws and have perfected the show's formula, and thus the show takes a dramatic improvement. Miraculous is incredibly flawed. Some of its issues have been present as early as season 1, and hopefully I speak for most people when I say that we choose to keep watching because we can see the potential of the series, and we're attached to the characters, we're invested in their stories. But when a show refuses to fix some of its flaws, that's the problem. Those flaws become bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that it's too distracting to ignore. Think of it like a snowball. It starts off small at the top of the hill, but when it reaches the bottom, it's so large. So imagine investing eight years into a show and for the finale to be that disappointing, because that's exactly what happened with Miraculous Ladybug. It's unforgivable, and I understand why a lot of people, including some of you, have expressed that you've lost complete faith in the series. I get it. So as we approach the end of this video, I'm just going to share my thoughts on season 5 as a whole. Now, I do have a season 5 review video in the works, and I'm working as fast as possible to get that uploaded. But in short, season 5 started off really strong, but I think there's a very obvious point in which the quality of the season started to dip, and that point is Kwame's choice. A bunch of storylines were just tossed in, poorly paced, and in turn left us hardly any time to emotionally invest. Every episode from Kwame's Choice onwards, I kinda just found myself enjoying the Adrianette content and then not really caring about anything else. The only exception is the episode Emotion, which is hands down the best written episode of the entire show. The Adrian move into London storyline was so pointless to me. Chloe being the mayor was an absolute waste of my time. Nobody can convince me to care about Feligami. I just will not be moved on that. I'm so sorry, guys. Luca leaving Paris for 12 whole episodes and then returning as a trained guardian is random but slay I guess. Kagami being a senti being was unnecessary, Felix's redemption was poorly executed and he became very flat as a character after the show gave him a love interest. The reverse love square was kind of rushed. Like I don't know, if I could summarize season 5 in a few sentences this is what I'd say. The season makes you think something is happening when nothing really important is happening. I rewatched a couple of the episodes in order post Kwame's choice and quickly realized that the season was kind of stalling us. It's actually very noticeable. Every episode has some sort of Adrianette plotline to distract us, and that's completely fine, but nothing really major is happening. We were simply being stalled until the events of the finale. It's the harsh truth. I'd give season 5 a solid 5 out of 10. I enjoyed most episodes to some degree, but objectively, the season missed the mark so badly. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are now on a hiatus, but don't worry, I've got lots of content coming up, which will for sure entertain you whilst we wait for season six. Also, the Miraculous movie is out on Netflix, so stay tuned for my analysis video on that. As always, now I wanna hear your thoughts. What did you think of the finale and season five in general? Loved it? Hated it? Let me know down in the comment section. But as for today, that's it from me, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>